off there because it was a huge, huge connect for, for Impaler to come into these fights, and they don't want that. And what we are seeing is a repeat of the previous game bans. These are identical bans. Kassin Vay Needley for Super Hot Crew and Sona Vi Lucian for SK. And with Dr. Mundo available and Shivana available, oh. they first pick Oriana and gave two um, bruises away. Now Candy Panda is going to pick Siva because Siva plus the two of them, assuming they can kite, it, we might see a Dignitas S comp. We might see a Dignitas S comp. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, the dip dive comp, you can Karma, get out or get Karma in. Karma Siva. Karma Siva is what I'm, I'm, I'm predicting for Candy Pan and F. That would be kind of ridiculous. Right now, they have a little taster's choice in pretty much the Bash brothers, if you will, at this point. We'll have to see what happens coming in. We do have the Ezreal being taken away. So they're kind of playing this back and forth. They got their, their Ori. I love this but pick. But the Ezreal now. I love the Zyra. Now, Ezreal, safe-ish pick, yeah. all right? Be able to j jump Take it away, away from you know, use range, Arcane Shift, get out cleanly. But the Zyra, to me, is going to be integral to controlling and containing the Mundo and the Shivana. Because if Mixer can get some good Strangle Thorns down and really zone out people, allow right. them to pick up one kill, that can help them out. Not seeing Karma this time around but I think Nif's Annie was good enough in the last game that I'll forgive him for not picking it. <laughs> Zig's making an appearance as well, and he's actually been available. This is the first time yeah. they actually decide to use him. Jez's Gragas wasn't the greatest. Moops could take the Orianna, and he did. Now, the last time I seen uh, Jez's playing Zig's was on two nights ago, three nights ago, at the We Play Invitation we, taught, we touched on and he used it to dismantle the red. Absolutely dismantle him, destroy right. them. And his ultimates were on point, his laning was particularly strong, and I really thought that his farming was good. If he can channel that performance here and try to shut down Moops' Oriana early, get a lot of uh, early damage down, that's definitely gonna go a long way to helping SK out to even up the series. We'll see where they go. We do see the Jinx pickup coming in, so a lot of that front end burst to come out for this team. We'll have to see how Candy Panda builds it. We heard a little earlier the Legolas build coming in of just going for Quick Bloodthirster into that Last Whisper to get that pop of damage out. We'll see how he plays it. It is going to be kill potential from a Jinx anyway. Anyway. Exactly. <laughs> and, and the reason I like that as well, if Jez has managed to get some good poke down, you know, yeah. throws out the bomb, somebody goes low on a Siege, you then follow it up with the Super Mega Death Rocks. Right. And if that doesn't AOE kill anybody, for life. and if that doesn't <laughs> kill anybody, you then have Mundo and Shivana running into close out. So there's a lot of kill potential and a lot of different ways you can use the same abilities that will synergize naturally with each other. But the onus for me, the eyes have to be on Mixer Zyra. I think that is the key here for Super Hot Crew. Thing I like, yeah, the thing I like about Super Hot Crew's team, we kind of just talked about it, the global ultimates and whatnot. If they start a kill or start aggression on one person, they should be able to pick that person up. There's no reason they should get away with that composition. You can Ziggs bomb them, or you can yeah. Mega Rocket them. And if that doesn't work, you have Mundo and Shivana <laughs> to run them down. I mean, the, Nightmare composition. the moves, the move speed that they get is yeah. phenomenal. But, you know, we've seen Alliance do it perfectly earlier. They did it with Elise as well. Shook was playing Elise in that yep. first game. They got cocoons, they got early ganks. They kited when they needed to kite. It was needly in the mid lane for Froggen. This time around, it's Oriana. And I think... If SK don't hit some CC and don't get the kills in team fights early, I actually feel like Super Hawker could kite them long enough to pick the kills up themselves. Hopping onto the map, we are in a game four here. SK looking to pick up a second game. And SHC looking to take away that LCS spot from SK that they are trying to reclaim as well. Two to one in the matchup right now as it stands. And we do see a switch up again on the support items by obviously not on an AD support. It's going to be the Spell Thieves Edge again coming in for Migza, but the Dorans stays for Nif. So we'll have to see how that lane plays out. They know where each other are right now. So we don't know where the lanes will be matching up until that happens. Well, that's the first time we've really seen sort of a, a grouping from SK. In all the other games, they've sort of fanned out more so than um, uh, we've seen in this particular matchup. And Super Hot Crew with a Wraith Ward, not deep enough to get it in the bushes, but at least enough to keep an eye on Sven Skeren and have an idea on where he's moving around the map and which ganks or which bushes he's moving towards. We see Nif with Annie once again starting Dawn Shield. So he definitely likes that Dawn Shield build. Um, Probably because with the Annies, you tend to be jumping in there, getting the stuns, looking for kills earlier on. 
So the extra health, the regen, the armor, it's just going to make you a little more survivable in those situations. Very early ward. I don't know how much of that's going to help him. But he knows that Mundo is up top. So at least they have the single lane. That's a lot of information, actually, if you think about it. So they're going to hold out here. Nothing's happening on the blue. They know they're safe. The two deep wards are going to give control over the top half of the jungle. So they are safe in the bottom lane to start this one off. And we'll have to see, again, if Sven Skarin just is everywhere in Paler is this match. That's the key, again. Uh, every time we've seen 2v2s, it's been Sven Skarin that's helped Candy Panda and Nif win their lane. Yeah. And Impaler has not learned or has not adapted to that pressure uh, to actually allow him to counter the ganks. Candy Panda and Nif right now. It's going to be going head to head. Good poke coming out from Mixer. He's once again gone from that Spell Thief. Likes to get the poke, likes to apply damage, and he's zoning well. But if he gets stunned, that's very scary because there's not a lot of additional HP on Mixer Zyra. Slow. Wow, Candy Panda very low right now. It's going to be interesting to how they play this. This could be a hard aggression here. Candy Panda very low. The Ignite goes down. The barrier's on. Is it going to be the last tick that hits him? The health potion that he drank as soon as he flashed keeps him alive. I don't know what he was expecting to, to, to do The <laughs> Barrier bait to what? The minions weren't at the tower yet. He's now going to miss that sort of first wave and a half worth of creeps. Niff's going to do the best he can to CS while still taking poke from Mixon. Flash and Barrier burned for yeah. a level one Candy Panda. That's going to be big. They could be three by the time he gets back to lane. They're trying to push it into the turret, and they actually are trying to pretty much deny everything they can here, as you would when you push an ADC out of lane. Now, the same thing happened in the previous game. At levels one, two, and three, Heydel and Mixer had Candy Panda and Nif's number. They just seemed to outplay them in the previous matchup with it, that It never hit that effect, though. Yeah, th this is the strongest lead that we've had. They've forced Candy Panda back. He's missed a wave and a half worth of creeps. He's burned his summoners. Yeah. But they need to convert it to kills. Yes, lane presence is great. It allows you to CS, but Candy Panda still kept up in CS, even with all that pressure in the previous game. So we'll have to see if Mixer and uh, Haydel can actually convert it to, to kills on the board. Yeah, the safe play of the bottom lane kind of rolls into effect now. So even the, two, the, the gank coming in from Impaler may be a little bit harder now that they're going to play super duper safe. Already pushing one wave there going back. Candy Panda wants to get some items under his belt. I think he may still be down a level. No, he will be by the time he gets back to lane. But he's got the second Doran, so they could still do pretty well. Mimer, Mimer and Freddy kind of meeting face to face up top. And already, Mimer getting some aggression in. Yeah, Mimer's got a, a pretty strong advantage in the early stages. And I think Renekton should be able to control a Mundo, mm -hmm. you know, at, in the first opening couple of levels. Once Mundo gets his level six, once he starts to get some items under his belt, probably level eight, nine upwards, that's when he should be able to start dealing with Renekton. I'm not sure if there's kill potential between the two, though, because uh, simply put, they're both super beefy. And as, you, as we were saying, Impaela and Sven Skarin. <laughs> Always next to each other. They're, they're like, maybe they're brothers and they don't know it. They <laughs> think exactly the same. They even going to ward the same bush in that particular instance. We'll see where they decide to go from here. Both of them on the top side of that map. So it could be possibly that 2v1. Once one reads it, it doesn't look like it's actually going to be Impaler. No, he does decide to come back. Yeah, we'll see how he decides to jump in. Mime has actually stunned Freddy up. Sven Skarin hasn't engaged yet, but because of the delay, it means Impaler's come in. Impaler's red buff should be wearing off fairly soon, and this does look like the engage. Mimer played this fantastically, keeping himself out in the open, and they're like, wait a minute, he's, he's way too careful here. Whoa, Sven Skarin getting locked up quite hard. The cocoon, and then the stun coming from Mimer. Can what? they finish the kill, though? The auto we attack hit Freddy. Wow, the health potion drank just in time. I, Impaler switched to human form, and I'm 100% certain the auto attack caught yep. Freddy instead of Sven Skarin, so that red buff, just as it was wearing out, means SK get away. Very, very Ooh. close call there, if you're an SK Gaming fan. Uh, teleport coming in for Freddy, yep. so once again, just not wanting to lose CS. While the bottom lane's backed, Hadel and Mixer actually picked up a fortitude of uh, an elixir of, no, brilliance pot, thank you. Dun -dun. An elixir of brilliance, that was it. <laughs> so Mixer has drank that, he's gonna have the CDR, and he's going to be trying to once again get control of the lane. It didn't work out in the previous game. And we'll have to see if it works out this time as he's been stunned. Oh, he may have bought that elixir to take it to the grave. One more shot. It's going to get the speed up. They're going to make it out. One more attack. Oh, he can't get in range. He got the auto attack. And he goes down without using his barrier. Barrier was up. Barrier was up during the course of that fight. And Candy Panda did not pick it up.
The kill gets picked up by Nif. He's the one that gets the gold. And oh. on the other side, Haydel's the one that picks up the gold in his pocket. So overall, that's in favor of Super Hot Crew. The gold went to the carry, the man who's going to need it more. Strong plays coming out of that bottom lane. I was going to say, how long can these guys go for fights and have the cookie crumble where somebody gets away with 10 HP? It wasn't very long, quick shot. It was only another fight in the bottom lane. Haydel and Migza finally capitalized on the aggression they've had for two straight games. And that was also the first time we've seen an Annie stun in lane used offensively in a 2v2. Previously, yeah. it had to, we had to wait for the, uh, right. the, the ganks of Sven Skeren before those stuns came in to secure kills. But this time around, Candy Panda and Nif saying, look, Zyra is squishy enough for us to go in. And right now, Mixer just chunked, you know, 40% of, of Candy Panda's hit points thanks to that elixir. It's, it is helping, but again, it needs, to, it needs to earn its investment back. Yeah, he's rocking 60 ability power. That's pretty good. The bomb it, yeah. did not land, and Sven Skeren grabs blue thanks to Burnout. I was looking at this inventory. That's that's a misplay. That's uh, A little bit. Jez is not <laughs> landing the bouncing bomb, and, you know, just unfortunate. And we'll have to see how it affects, because Moop should be able to secure his blue buff very, very soon. Coming up onto eight minutes. We could see that siege power, or siege stopping power, you should say, coming in from Jez's in mid. He's not having too much trouble, but Moops is being sure to keep that lane pushed, so he can't exactly get to either side of the lane to throw that bomb. It just feels like right now, SXC are in, in the advantageous position. Sven Skeren almost, almost <laughs> bites of more than he can chew. And we do see a fight in top lane. This looks like deja vu. Back and forth, Freddy and Mimer about to go at it again, but they decide to back off when they put on each other's ultimates for good measure. Yeah, Ignite was burned by Mimer though, right. so at least that threat is now mitigated or reduced. And Freddy, of course, will have Sadism up before that Ignite is available once more. And, you know, numbers are even across the board for yeah, the most good. part in CS, with the exception of Candy Panda, thanks to that level one. You know, thanks to him losing that wave and a half, two waves very early on. He's 15 CS down, and Mixer again, Super, super strong in these early phases, but it hasn't translated to uh, extreme control just yet. Although 20 CS lead, that is, that is a noticeable advantage. Quite strong on the turret in that bottom lane. They really haven't done anything to the other side. I don't even think Candy Panda and Nif have been on the other side of the river in this lane. No, it's too risky. They're, they're, it's too they're too far behind right now. You know, it's double Dorans and a longsword versus Ruby yeah. Crystal Sheen Dorans and the, the Brilliance part has just worn off there from Mixer, so his ability power is going to be down. Uh, looking at that mid lane for a moment, it's just a farm fest once again. You yep. know, the, the kill potential between Ziggs and Oriana is somebody has to make a misplay. Exactly. You know, somebody has to get chunked it's there, but... very low, and it's just being a farm fest, which they're keeping even with one another. And his use. Oh, we're going to see what happens here. The True Shot Barrage crosses both. You got to remember, it was the Sheen that was purchased first. That does big damage if you're in Ezreal. That feel-good Q coming out in the double. And it looks like Haydale's going to be forced to back off. Ooh, Jez is getting found out as well. So all of SK really being pushed back at the point. Jez's was trying to move down to get in range yep. for the, the, the Mega Inferno Bomb. And I think if Candy Panda had delayed his ultimate by a second more, the execute ability may have helped out pick up the kill on Mixer, but a great turnaround. Mixer and Haydar were able to respond. Ignite, as well as Barrier, are still available. And also that time around, Candy Panda held onto his Barrier, but didn't need it. <laughs> Mimer still at the turret in the top lane. I don't know when anybody from SK has been against a turret of SHC right now. We, like you said, they stop Ziggs because Moops has had a press to the turret. They try for the bomb here. Again, it's not going to be used in a fight. It was tried for blue last time. They are missing things, like I said, by the cookie crumbling. And that's going to start playing on mentality. Definitely. And if Super Hot Crew can continue to take those little advantages yep. and do them over and over again, those little advantages eventually become very, very big. Sven Skeren is just farming. He's 20 CS ahead of Impaler, but he hasn't had the same presence as Evelyn as he finds Mima. A quick slice and dice. They will go for the follow. Dominus is on. He could go down here, but they choose to back off. There really isn't that much armor coming out yet. Decide not to go for the dive, and I think that Sven Skeren's early game presence is significantly less on Siobhan. He's playing her very much as a farm jungler. He's trying to just build up items first, and then will most likely decide to camp the duo lane if he wants to try save Candy Panda, because as it stands, Candy Panda still is struggling to catch up as far as the CS is concerned. 
Uh, Fiend's Unholy Grail just purchased in the hands of Jez's 1,600 golds right now sits on moves. So he is waiting to go back, and he's had control of that lane, so we'll have to see what he decides. Goes for the same thing, and then some power. These guys have been building glass cannons, so I wouldn't be surprised. The one thing about the two glass cannons, though, uh, Jez's has way more range with six. Absolutely. So uh, in that previous fight, Jez's was actually trying to move towards the river for what I can assume would have been an ultimate on the tower. And that's something Oriana can't do. They've called Mixer. Oh, the flash and engage in. It's going to be Mixer going down, and it may be able to finish off another one. Paydale stays safe. Great play there. Even though Sven Skeron, you know, moved in to try to help out, he wasn't even needed. Candy Panda and Nif had way too much pain from Mixer's Thresh in the last game, and they're paying it back in kind right now. Because basically, every time Tiffus is up, they seem to just be diving onto that Zyra. It's working out, but unfortunately, it's Nif that's actually getting the kill credit and picking up those kills. Sven Skarin actually making his way into the jungle on the backs. So, oh, he's going in onto Haydale. Haydale needs the support here of Impaler, and once they see him, he's able to keep it safe. That's very low HP coming in onto Sven Skarin, but they don't want any of it. Not enough armor there from Sven Skarin. A little bit optimistic. They did, however, get the flash from Haydale. So that is a, is a win in the sense that if he can repeat the gank in the next three or four minutes before the flash is up, it's going to be an advantageous position. You know there's one arcane shift. You can anticipate for it, follow it up with Dragon's Descent, and you should be able to shut Haydel down. Not too much of a gold lead to really give anybody an advantage here. It's all been the movement. A lot of action by Haydale and Migza in the bottom lane, but we see once they hit that six, that kill potential went up. Candy Panda and Nif coming up with a killer own. Yeah, since Garen was there, but... That was the Flash Tibbers coming in to solidify that kill. Migza is going to be taking some good damage here. Maybe just to get away. like Or a, not. A good grasp. They boost. stopped. They a good grasp. Yeah, that was true. The zone zoning potential of that meant that Nif couldn't get in range to stun. The Candy Panda was just a little bit outranged. But Candy is still very far behind in terms of items. He's got a Vamp Scepter secured, and he's fighting against a Phage and a Sheen. So he really is still playing from behind. The 20 CS is, of course, a testament to that. Now, top lane, we haven't looked at it all. Yeah. Because the They're noodle, go back the noodle, again. The noodle <laughs> fighting is, is not the most exciting. Wait, I'm predicting a fight. But we've got a difference in items here. You've got Sunfire Cape, because, of course, Renekton deals physical damage against the Spirit Versage. Right, right. Because, of course, Freddy's wants to do Mundo deals magic damage. And we'll have to see, you know, who can swing the noodle harder, because... <laughs> It's not the most exciting of battles, as you not, see Sadism goes down. Not really, but they have kept it at the same position. Being this close, Freddy's going to have to walk off into the jungle before he teleports. It's going to take a little bit longer, as this turret may go down in the bottom lane, for him to engage, because you can stun him up with that Renekton. No flash, but they've got Whoa! Mixer. Oh, they just go right aggro. They walk out from the range of the turret, and it's just actually what they needed, and they leave Sven Skaren to take some Polaroids. 3-0 right now on Nif. He should probably start investing some of that money maybe <laughs> into some AP, as you can see. Impaler, he wants to look to catch Freddy. He's got the cocoon! Oh, they go on to him once again. Freddy trying to throw on the ultimate. A great flash over the wall, but it's the repel and the flash coming from Mimer. They are going to be able to solidify that kill. And like we're getting back into the game, though. Let's rock it out here. The 2014 EU LCS promotion for the spring coming in here. These guys are trying to solidify and lock it in on the side of SK, getting back their spot, but it's eight SHC right now looking to steal that away, give themselves a limelight of the spring turn season. Dragon is spawning in one minute. There are a couple of pink wards up and down the river in favor of SK Gaming. If a fight were to break out, it would be at the cost of Dragon, and I think both teams need to be a little bit careful about this. At the moment, SK has got superior vision, and we'll see if they want to capitalize on that by actually challenging for it or trying to secure it themselves because the previous one went to SHC, if you call it correctly. Mm -hmm. The Mega Inferno Bomb was not able to steal it. A little poke damage coming in, allowing them. Uh, Mooper's like, hey, there's some wards on this bottom side. And actually, all the wards for Jez's have been put in middle. Bottom turret very low here, as we see. It looks like they're going to say that Oriana's backing, so they may try to do something here. Yeah, and I just realized that I'm colorblind. The vision is actually in favor of SHC because they're on the blue side. Oh, fair enough. As you see, I was looking there. Uh, <laughs> what gave it away was the fact that there was red pings on the Dragon Pit. As right. you can see right now, the fact that you've got Sven Skeren in the area, teleport is up and available by Fred. Wow. And they've got a little bit of vision. 
Flash Tibbers is a very real possibility because Nif has done it plenty of times already. Super Hot Crew have started the Dragon off. This could become a 5v5, but Teleport needs to be used. Keep an eye for that ability. Oh, the Flash Tibbers goes all the way back to the line, and it's going to be able to take down Migza. He falls very fast. Haydale is limping away, but he goes down too. The Ooh. double kill coming in. The Mega Death Rocket from Candy Panda going to finish one off as well, and they take these guys down. I was just about to say ASHC was perfectly positioned. Ori Oriana went back. They brought Mimer in but SK knew what was going on. Brilliant play from SK Gaming. The Tibbers, as well as Mega Inferno Bomb, just melted Super Hot Crew. And by the time the teleport had come in from Freddy, Super Hot Crew were on the retreat. They were backing away. Yeah. Even the Stranglethorns wasn't enough to actually stop them from running them down. So a very, very good play. Two of those kills going over to Candy Panda. They get the Dragon, Ooh. they get the Tower. And they must be sitting on a massive chunk of gold right now because that is a very big swing of power in favor of SK Gaming. Good scores around the board for them as well. Really, it's Freddy not picking up the kills. Four assists coming in for Jezz's. He's always been coming into the fight late. Moops is just keeping him on his heels in the mid lane. And we'll see if they can break that. We'll see if they can soon get together as a team and use all this AOE they bring to the table. Now, I feel like Impaler is struggling a little bit on Elise this game. He's down 30 CS. Yes, he does have a kill to his name, but we haven't seen any form of gank from him. And yeah. to be very fair, oh, he struggled. No. Impaler may be in trouble. They've caught, they've bumped into Nif. No stun, though. They know that he's right on the backside. Oh, they hit off moves. So he's going to be forced back down to the same spot. The right shockwave. over the wall. Sven Skarin comes in as a shockwave, almost takes down Nif. They get out with a sliver of health. It's always a sliver of health. Impaler falls as well. Another double kill consecutively coming in for Sven Skarin. SK Gaming, they don't chase the red mist and decide to turn back to the tower. This cost them in game one, but this time around, I don't think anybody from Super Hot Crew can challenge it. Another two kills, this time being picked wow. up by Sven Skarin. He's already got that giant spell, and he's gonna start getting even more tanky. And this is what we were afraid of. This is what the, the, the threat or the potential was. We are gonna see Sven Skarin butting heads with Mima. Renekton versus Shivana, and it does look like Sven Skarin's just gonna back away. He was trying to steal a blue buff, but he was forced away. It's Mime cool. Was He's there got 2,200 gold to spend after spending 1,200 last time. So an, a ridiculous amount of gold just flows into his pocket. And he still hasn't caught up to Jez's at 6,900, who has, I believe, the most in the game. Actually, that's very interesting because that's where most of the gold is, is focused right now. Top laners are even. Mid lane is basically even. There's 900 gold difference between 80 carries and 1,000 gold difference between supports. But it's actually the jungler and the supports that's got most of the gold. And when you're yeah. 305 and 402, that's obviously why, <laughs> right? But we now have to see how, how this impacts the game. As long as Nif can keep comboing his Tibbers damage with Mega Inferno Bomb, it's going to allow the bruises of SK to help finish off, finish off the kills. And Jess is just saying, nope. Not today, buddy. <laughs> 20 minutes coming up on the clock. 9 to 2 as SK seems to be falling into the form that most of the fans are used of, used to here. 33,000 to 29,000 on the board. And the potential gold sitting here as they take down Haydale. Possibly the it rocket hits. hits. And he's going to get the last attack on. This turret could follow. But I don't think they have the way for it just I think, yet. I think that's a smart decision as well. Candy Panda and Nif, while they've got great vision with SK, you can see the bottom half of the mm -hmm. jungle, the top half of the jungle. There was a couple of members missing from Super Hot Crew. They were actually yeah. sitting in base. So they backed away for a little bit. Now the minion wave is up here. They know where Mix is. And there's Orianna. She's accounted for in the mid lane. So now it's safe to sit around you at the tower. Unfortunately, though, the wave clear from Mix is a little too strong and they have to be forced to fall back. It's going to be hard to stay in a fight against Freddy now. And Sven Skarin. Double burning AoEs, yeah. double Sunfire Cape. There's so much extra damage before they really even start dealing their real damage. And there's no utility yet to escape, with the exception of Zyra. Right, so, yeah. You know, if, if Zyra doesn't you got to help yourself, place, pretty much. You've got a movement speed buff from Orianna and an Arcane Shift, but you've seen how quickly they can deal with it. Nif anticipated the Arcane Shift, seen it coming in, and just threw the tippers down at the destination <laughs> and said, well, now what you're going to do? Everybody. I want to point out the vision once again. Absolutely. The amount of wards that SK has over the jungle is very impressive, and that's why it's allowing it, um, Sven Skarin to go in and you know, steal that white. He does need to be a little careful because he's about to run into two champions. He's able to get away, but that's a little brave. 
he does have a Sunfire Cape, he does have the Ancient Golem, but don't throw away kills that you don't need to. They've been doing quite well with really not Jess's having too much of an impact, which can't spell good things for SHC right now. Once he is combined into the fight, even more AoE, they will be able to take these fights down real quick. Mimer, Freddy, still not doing too much in the top lane, and we still haven't seen that teleport yet. Uh, no, the last one was the dragon, but basically the fight was one already yeah, anyway. Absolutely. So that was just to guarantee it. <laughs> the one thing I do want to touch on when you, you highlighted Svenska and Strengths, although maybe picking a fight does just get warded and instantly kills it. Thanks to that twin bite. The timing was great. Um, I actually think this is probably the strongest farming jungle game that we've seen all weekend. I feel like at 22 minutes on to have 130 CS, <laughs> Cheeky Impaler smites that one. Uh, he's got a 50 CS advantage. He's got four kills, two assists. Yeah. He's doing very, very well in securing the last hits. And talking about last hits, Candy Panda was so far behind, he's now caught up and actually overtaken Haydel. It was just a matter of time when they hit six in the Annie Jinx lane. They've been working it quite well, and still, now this time, it's being used. They, they're not as weak as they were when they were trying to sever a split push, and this is working way better with Jinx. Yeah, completely agree. And every flaw that we, we, we talked about, you know, we highlighted yeah. the decision making. Jat even said he doesn't feel that winning for SK is necessarily won by picks and bands. It is a factor, of course, yeah. but it's the decision making. It's the how you play the game, how you respond. As it stands right now, Dragon has respawned. SK have timing for it. Teleport is available for Freddy, but this time, Super Hot Crew may be a little bit of a better engage potential. Candy Pan is soloing it a little down, though. Candy Panda almost getting the dragon. It will be taken down by Sven Skarin, and he goes into the fight for his team, locking it up in the middle. Will there be a teleport in? Wow. No, he's already there, and a huge knockup coming in. They will be able to get themselves into this fight even more. Sven Skarin gets a kill for himself, but they walk out limping. But now, before they pick up more, Jezus finally puts himself on the board, but it is going to be a retribution kill. Only one for the team going in onto Nif. The Mega Inferno Bomb just melted Mix's HP. Candy Pan is even gonna catch Impaler. No. Eventually. <laughs> Eventually. It was I, close. He had a really good cocoon lock up there, just throwing it through the bush, and it was blind. So right now, Jezus and Sven Skira, and they're chasing down the tower. Run out of minions to stick with. Impaler's still trying to escape. Wolves were not aggroed, so Impaler may actually get away. Oh, that's so sneaky. Yep, Candy Panda mm. hasn't found him. Impaler should be able to make it out right now. And you know, three for one plus Dragon. Another decisive team fight from yep. SK. Teleport was used by Freddy, so he did join, uh, join the party and start getting involved. And he has actually a great replay of it. The the Mega Inferno Bomb's really what you want to focus on. The the timing and spacing there from Jesus was fantastic. Mixel went to 20% HP. And very importantly, the shockwave coming out of Oriana only caught Nip. It didn't hit anybody else. Nif does take a command yeah. attack for his trouble as well. You know, it just comes down to the fact that the moment SK engaged, SHC were running back, grouped up, and right. all got hit. That pop-up as well, I didn't get to say fully, but it missed. Yeah. They were all already past it, like you said, just running through. 25 minutes on the clock. We'll see if they can get it again. It's hard to fight on your heels, though. They got the team to do it. They have to keep it bay, and I think it's going to have to be under a turret now. Now, I can't remember the timings in game two, but this is on a seven, 8,000 gold lead at 25 minutes. I think this is the biggest lead we've had this early in the game. And SK seemed to be accelerating. It was a slow start, patient start. It's now growing, growing. Impaler is about to find some Scarin, and they're trading damage off the Cocoon. So Scarin not even worried about the situation right now, and you can see he is completely flexing his muscles, standing still, knowing somebody else was coming up. Mix on the other side gets caught, but will Sven Scarin initiate onto that because his team is being torn apart on the back line. Nif is going to go down. No, he dodges it out. It actually hits mine. It's alive. Gets some help there. Very nice job. Impaler goes down. Oh. The Death Rocket just finding the, the right through the needle, not hitting anybody. Double kill coming in for Jinx. It looks like they are going to continue this fight. He gets it, actually walking on the last mine. Unfortunate for Haydel. It's going to be the Baron coming in for SK. Ace only losing Freddy 1-2-2 two, two during the engagement is a great fight. And that actually started pretty poorly for SK. Yeah. You know, they started the fight, got jumped on, almost lost Nip. And thanks to the amount of damage that uh, Candy Panic comes down, I mean, this is the engagement right here. Nif gets chucked. This is pretty chaotic. 
forced to flash over the Stranglethorns, and Freddy is running interference on the left-hand side in the back line. And thanks to a very good stun from Myth, Candy Pan is able to pick up the kill there uh, onto Mima, even though the, the, the rocket runs wide. It's not a big deal. And basically, the, the cleanup potential with Get Excited just allows Jinx to keep running. Just chasing down, chasing down. They had a seven, 8,000 gold lead in items that allowed them to survive the bad engage, turn it around, get the kills, get excited, get more kills, get excited, get Baron. I'm sure the fans are excited right now. 18 to four, very definitive play coming out of SK. It took a bit for them to find their ground, but it seems like they are running strong now. The game not yet being over, but it is looking grim here, and it looks like SK is gonna keep themselves in for another match if they keep this up. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I think SK have a, a strong enough lead that it's now their game to lose. Yeah, right? absolutely. They have to find a way to mess it up. And I think if they push towers like they did in game three, uh, using Baron buff, using the siege potential and their kill potential, that they can make themselves in a good position. Mixer, not sure you really want to be picking a fight there with Svenskeren and Nif. A lot of damage as Jezus does get caught up by Hadel. The Mega Inferno Bomb's available. We may see if he throws it down. Decides against it. Doesn't want to waste the cooldown without a guarantee of it being a kill. But look at the rest of SK. They're coming yeah. in from behind. This is, would be a perfect time for SK to fight. Right now, Haydale and Migza are both sitting on over 1,000 gold, not scaled into their inventory. So if this were to have... Oh, <laughs> just missing Haydale. That would have done huge damage. It probably wouldn't have killed him, but it is going to mean the turret. They got the back vision on. The oh, the bomb taken down Zyra. It's not over. Could be going continuously into the fight. Will they be able to take down Mimer? I don't think so. The turret falls, and that's all the aggression that they had. They're going to try to defend this one. Right now, we got Candy Panda in the top lane pushing, but a split push as well. A three lane by Svenskeren in the bottom. That was three versus four in the mid that SK Gaming won. They got the mid inner turret. They got the top inner turret. They got the bottom inner turret as well. And now they're starting to group up. SK is just so far ahead. 15,000 gold and they're on the inhibitor continuously going. Nobody's even able to react right now. They were back spending gold, not in the fight. Zyra already went down, so she was gone for the majority, and that's a huge disengage for them. They did not get that strangle thorn out. They haven't even stopped. They're just allowing the region of Baron to work in their favor, and it does look like they now want to focus this bottom lane. Mima is miles away. He's got no teleport. If Mima doesn't get back from the top lane, this is potentially going to be another turret. This is SK absolutely in full force. They go into the fight. Dragons descend in. Oh, the rocket just missing off to the side. The turret will be theirs. And it's just SHC right now watching their base get run over. Yeah, there's nothing they can do. Freddy was complete control oh, of that one. once again. Look at the bomb. Continuing on. It, they're making it look easy right now with the amount of strength they have given themselves. And to that fact, they deserve the win on this one. 21 to 4, coming up on 20k gold lead. 30 minutes into the game, they turned this around from game one. Yeah, completely different team. You would not say it's the same five players if you compare them to game one. As right now, Haydel almost getting the kill on Jezzers. Does actually get taken down at the end, but the rest of SK, they're still in the Nexus turret. Candy Panda solo in Mima. <laughs> Candy Panda wants a few more for the KDA. He's gonna be able to take them down. Very nice kiting. You can see how strong they are right now. They took a beating in the early game, but kept their heads in it. This game was a message. I think this was the most decisive win That's we've seen in the series. And Super Hot Crew have to shake this off. If they cannot shake off this defeat, they may not be able to win game five, and we're going to game five for a, yet another series in the EU LCS promotion. We're going to game five. Happened in spring, going to summer earlier this year, and now it's happening today, going to spring next year. You know, it's something we haven't talked about throughout this uh, tournament really at all, but it's something that's completely written a book for itself, and that's nerves. Playing on a new stage, playing with a new team, and you, you don't really have to say much more. It's just been played out in every one of these games. There is no more pressure than this game right now. A two game two. five for a spot to be a professional League of Legends player in the 2014 season. Uh, for a shot to start your path on the road to Worlds. Like, I feel sick for them. I'm not even playing. It's scary. Yeah. It's absolutely scary. And then you take into consideration how much want is there. SK has tasted it. They've been in that position. SHC is coming up on that. It's a dream of theirs. Who's going to want it more? The dream 
or the retaking of that taste you've had before. I also feel like Jezus has to pick a champion that he can have an impact on. Yeah, he two games, he's done well. It, two games. He wasn't explosive he wasn't there. by any means. He wasn't there. Um, I, I don't want to say he played so badly that it was a detriment, but he no. wasn't there. He had no impact. His Gragas game in particular, um, I just felt like there wasn't, there wasn't much he was doing to sway team fights in his team's yeah. favor. And I think Ziggs this time around, he was able to get to a point that his ultimate just melted everybody. And that was super impactful because the rest of his team right. then cleaned up. Well, we'll have to see. We have to take a quick break, but when we return, it's time for the fifth and final game of tonight's promotion tournament series. SK Gaming and the Super Hot Crew take to the rift with their L.